Hey, hey everyone, Snoo back again early on in day two. And like I mentioned in the last video, I was going to be sharing my progress uh, as it is something that some people felt they wanted to see as far as related to the build guide that I came out with. Uh, the progress uh, to reaching the ultimate gearing point of that build guide. So I'm going to show you guys uh, where I'm at. Uh, very early in day two, actually. It's not even 24 hours after uh, the first video I made. Here's the currency I've got so far. Nothing spectacular. I am into maps now. Um, which kind of breaking into yellow maps here very recently. Um, honestly, very casual league start for me. Um, you know, I, I kind of played like all day for the most part. I took a nap in the middle of the day. You know, just kind of didn't really, uh, didn't, didn't push it too hard. Uh, but... The gear here has got me with these kind of stats, and I got almost uh, 10,000 DPS with the primary attack, according to this sheet. So this is, of course, much higher than the POB would be, uh, and then almost 4,000 for the Ballista Totem setup. Uh, there are there are some interesting things that I'm here to report today. First of all, I feel a lot better. <laughs> Uh, second of all, uh, I had mentioned in the last video about Death's Harp. I did go out, out of my way and buy one of those. Uh, it is a physical DPS bow with plus two arrows. Thought it would be really good for this build. Turns out it's not quite as good as I thought uh, going into maps. I actually replaced it before I finished the campaign even. Um, being physical DPS, it, it does... It, being physical DPS without conversion over to elemental damage, you are missing uh, some, some damage there because some of our damage is... Uh, like on the tree, like a perfect example of what I'm, I'm talking about is something like this. This notable um, was not giving me really any value uh, at all with that kind of bow, with a physical DPS bow without conversion. Uh, so I was missing, I, I realized after the fact that I was kind of missing a lot of damage that I would have if I just went pure elemental. Uh, plus with the league before with them uh, GGG increasing the the, the two-handed bow damage modifiers, flat damage modifiers, like, tremendously increasing them to match what two-handed melee weapons give, uh, really seals the deal that I guess, uh, if you're going pure elemental, which means you're going to have some passive points that are increasing elemental damage, you really shouldn't be going uh, physical DPS, uh, not, not certainly as a primary weapon. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I fixed that. I got this bow in here now. This was like a grand total of seven chaos <laughs> or something. Uh, it, it took me one shrieking essence of wrath, and it wasn't a totally ter it wasn't a terrible hit. It wasn't very good though. Really, when you hit this, when you hit a weapon like this with uh, an essence like this, what you're really hoping for is at least one decently rolled other elemental damage, either, you know, flat fire or flat cold. Didn't get either one of those. Got some really crappy tier physical. But I did get 80% increased elemental damage with attack skills, which sounds amazing. It's actually not that, that good. I'd, re I'd much, much, much rather have even like a low, fairly low tier flat uh, elemental roll on fire or cold than this. But hey, you know, it's what I got. It's a budget. Early league. Can't afford to be slamming a bunch of Shrieking Essences of Wrath in day one, because I made this bow in, in day one. Uh, so that's what I got, you know, and, and I, it was nice. It was definitely a good idea to uh, buy the bow and hit, slam it with the Essence myself, because there were there were other bows, you know, on... Oh, here we go. Here in the middle. Just to prove that I am making some sales. Yeah, I forgot to put DND, &D, but, uh, you know, I found uh, Star Conjas in a ritual altar or whatever. I guess uh, he doesn't want it or I was too slow. Okay, well, we'll DND it then. Yeah, so, um, what I was saying is there were other bows on trade and they were way overpriced without the, the links already in place. So, uh, in my opinion, as my advice to you, uh, if you're trying to get into maps and, and especially if you're not really aware just how impactful having, I mean, even just one <laughs> uh, Shrieking Essence elemental damage roll is, Buy yourself a five link bow and then just slam it once and just take literally whatever roll you have. Um, it was mentioned in the chat that you might as well hit the attack speed mod with an exalt. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. I will definitely do that on the next bow because this is a this is like an intermediary thing that's only going to last me like a grand total of eight playing hours or something. I'm only going to use this bow for like less than eight hours played probably. Uh, the next one will be a six 
six link uh, that's going to cost, uh, according to the market now, it, I'll probably do the uh, highborn bow that comes from the divination card because it's, it's item level 100. You can see that this bow is not a high item level. It's actually 83. That's right. I did make sure I got an 80, a higher item level. Uh, so I will buy a one of those six linked uh, highborn bows that are always common early on in the league, and I will slam it again with Essence of Wrath. I'll do more, probably more than one to get it, to guarantee at least a decent roll on it. And then sure, you know, I might uh, might hit it with uh, attack speed roll after that. So that's what I'm doing with the weapon, and, and I spend a little extra time on the weapon because it's actually the most important slot. It's the one that's definitely going to, you know, give you the most damage increase uh, beyond anything else you could do on your gear. So it is actually worth paying maybe, you know, Hit it with two or three, as uh, shrieking is. If you look on, um, if you look on, in the game wiki, you'll see that shrieking essence is really not much worse than deafening essence, but shrieking essence is way better than screaming essence in terms of value. Uh, so shrieking essence is the way to go here if you're looking for something good and on a budget. Uh, yeah, go ahead and buy yourself a five link, and then once you get even a little bit more currency, buy the six link, sell the five link to hand me down, sell it to somebody else, probably sell it for even higher than you bought it for. Especially since you crafted it and it has some rolls on it. And then by the sixth link and just, uh, you know, slam. I'm not even 100% sure what the sixth gem is going to be. But the fifth gem in this case is definitely added cold uh, damage support. Um, I should probably think about dropping Mirage Archer. It's not going to be that great. But, you know, it's kind of hard to figure out what... There's also added lightning damage support, which would be decent. Uh, but I'll have to look more into the gems at a later point. Yeah, good morning everybody. A lot of... A lot of people in chat coming in here <laughs> as I start this video. Hey, I got a Taming. It's one of my items on the list. Uh, I had mentioned in the build guide this is one of the more expensive items on the list. Yeah, apparently not. <laughs> this league, it's uh, one of the cheaper items on the list. I couldn't believe I got this for 11 Chaos only. I think I paid about 30 or 40 Chaos for it last league. Um, it, it was more expensive than the Gull Helm last league. And yet the Gull Helm this league, evidently is out of pricing range uh, currently at the moment. I, th I suspect it's going to have a market crash at some point, uh, but unless they really did reduce the, the drop rate on it. But anyway, um, I do not have the goal yet because it's selling for like a Divine Orb or more, something right now. Yeah, so the taming, super amazing. 10% uh, chance to free Shock Igniter. I got to talk about that here in a minute. Uh, but all the elemental resistances I would need really, really helped. It, it actually helped me cap my elemental resistances, which was really, really important. And then uh, I had mentioned crafting my own other ring. I actually bought this, you know, being smart. I, I went ahead and put some of the modifiers or roles that I want on live searches too, in case they showed up for cheap. Uh, it looks like the ring is a really good item to buy for cheap, something like this. This is the lightning res doesn't serve me anything. The five maximum energy shield is worthless too, uh, but the flat lightning damage is nice bonus. And I had mentioned in the build guide, get your life strength roll and a halfway decent intelligence roll. These rolls are real, basically perfect. And I'm gonna, I, I mean, I'll replace this at some point, but I may, I'll probably keep this all the way into having soul thirst. Uh, by the way, I don't have soul thirst yet. No, I'm not running soul thirst yet. Not quite. <laughs> Next, you know, tomorrow I may come out with another video tomorrow because this progress is, you know, it's a lot of progress made in a short period of time. Uh, sure, certainly, I think by the end of today, by the end of day two, uh, I will have my flask set up decently with a soul thirst. Uh, the main reason I'm not using soul thirst right now is because I just don't have the flasks uh, for it yet. But um, certainly could have it in a matter of a few hours, honestly, uh, a few hours more playing time. I just need to find one big item. Um, and that's another thing. I haven't found any big items. Uh, I'm, I'm into yellow maps now. I haven't found a single Exalted Orb or Divine Orb or whatever. Any kind of item that is worth, you know, a significant amount of chaos. Quite often I will have found an item worth at least one that's worth something where I can sell it and then boom, you know, I got... That's my big ticket item that I can sell and then trade and get a bunch of stuff that I need. It hasn't happened yet, so I'm, I'm a little bit unlucky in that regard, but... It's all right. You know, stuff trickling in. In fact, the biggest thing I found... I, I want to go ahead and mention this. This is actually new to this league. The biggest thing I found uh, was 20 Gem Crutter Prisms that dropped at once off of an Arch Nemesis mod. So I, I think I uh, noticed Surgog was saying this, but he hadn't confirmed it. Some people have been reporting that uh, certain Arch Nemesis modifier combinations result in some interesting drops. Yeah, apparently one of them is, is things like uh, quality currency. 
So I, you, you guys may have noticed this too. Randomly, you'll get like one or two full stacks of black stuff, black whetstones or something like that, blacksmith whetstone. Uh, and uh, yeah, apparently, occasionally they can even drop as gem cutter prisms. So an entire full stack of gem cutter prisms uh, sold for 16 chaos. That's the biggest drop I've gotten all league so far. Uh, but that that was obviously really nice. I actually bought my taming ring off of that, off of that sale. Uh, anyway, uh, prism weave. If I could go back in time with a build guide, I probably would have mentioned this belt because I didn't realize just how good it was at the time. I, I saw the list of uh, uniques that got increased, but I, you know we didn't know um, how much, how rare these were going to be, or how much they cost. Quite surprising to me, as good as this belt is, it's only one chaos. So if you're still leveling. If you're still leveling right now, just buy this belt. It, it, it's a slam dunk. It's so much flat damage. Uh, and the flat damage is huge for this build, the flat elemental damage. It even has all resist for some reason. <laughs> and it has an elemental damage with attacks during flask effect for some reason. I, I don't know. Like, even if this belt, even if this belt had only the flat elemental f damage, it would be in contention for being like best in slot. For like a cheap option so it's, it's absolutely stupid insane how good this is the only thing it's missing is life um i i'm still like my mind is boggled by how good this belt is uh, for this build in particular a trinity based elemental pure elemental build um now i had found those boots and i mentioned there were other boots i like better i did go ahead and buy these boots because i had issues with trinity support having too much cold damage on a previous bow that i had um so the lightning damage to attacks here is actually basically solves any sort of trinity problems you might have trinity support problems uh, because it creates a, a large range in you know which damage element uh, is is the highest amount in sometimes it's gonna be lightning sometimes it's gonna be cold or fire or fire or whatever uh, drop shock ground while moving is really really good because you know you drop ballista totems you drop stuff around you can like deliberately stand on top of a boss and, and make them shocked 100% of the time stuff it's actually really nice and they are definitely a sort of glass cannon type item I don't have to worry too much about it only having 15% movement speed when I get so much movement speed from any other sources that's another thing that kind of you kind of have to get get that thought out of your head like oh these boots only have 20% movement speed but I could have 30% movement speed well they're trash then right I mean look I'm moving like 300% movement speed almost in maps I can go ahead and sacrifice a little on the boots uh, if they're if they have some of the other special modifiers in this case they do uh, chaos damage when you take critical strike taking a critical strike recently I mean I don't know it's just some random enchant I had on there uh, here's another big one uh, gloves so I I did not actually these gloves slipped under my radar I found these just straight up and then equipped them and tried them out and they're really good the second you get really any amount of this 10% chance to freeze shock and ignite they're exceptional uh, then because uh, stuff the, the downside of these gloves is pretty significant but it you we basically um, nullify any of the downside when we have you know a copious amount of chance to freeze shock and ignite enemies and it works out tremendously well highly recommend uh, trying these gloves out they're really really good i mean 15 percent increased life is essentially two full life rolls on a pair of gloves with a high super high tier resist roll and a mega cold damage flat uh, to attacks roll i mean that's like uh, on gloves, that's the equivalent of like three different cold damage to attack roll. So, I mean, this thing is basically has the same value. And 100% increased freeze duration on enemies is actually bonkers as well. Uh, so, so this thing is kind of like the equivalent of a six tier one rolls. If you, if you don't, if you just kind of look at it objectively and, and you're not saying, well, you know, my gloves have to have this modifier. They have to have, you know, the glove have to have you know two or three resistances they have to have attributes on now if you can get away from that line of thinking th this is basically these gloves are absolutely phenomenal uh one thing about these gloves though is it looks like the arch nemesis modifier frost strider i think bricks these gloves in completely so when i run into a frost strider arch nemesis mod i have to skip it i can't kill it because um they they specifically have the mod the uh the mod cannot be frozen uh attack them and therefore i cannot kill them it also seems to brick calling strike too i don't know if that's a bug or not 
Uh, but I notice that calling strike is not really working with these gloves. Not a huge deal, uh, considering how incredibly valuable they are. Somebody else uh, mentioning they had also seen full stacks of quality currencies. Yeah. Quiver. Got pretty lucky with this one. Uh, this was live search. I knew that this was probably an item that I was really going to have to find. Just buy it. Just try. This is definitely one of the more anticipated items that I would try and snipe <clears throat> off of trade. And I did. Uh, this is not actually amazing, but honestly, it's like pretty much on par with the one that I showcased in the build guide. Uh, especially given that it actually has tier 1 life. This only cost me 10 chaos. I've noticed that one that this good hasn't come off. Uh, I, I actually had second thoughts about buying it. I was like, I have a funny feeling if I miss this, I'm going to regret it. So I went ahead and bought it for 10 chaos and I don't regret it because I haven't seen any come up later. So by the way, so for quivers like this, decent quivers, you know, the high max life, bow attacks, fire additional arrows, and at least some other useful mods, um, they're the kind of items that the players who get a good league start and you know kind of rush to the end game real quickly they can get their hands on an item like this for super cheap this kind of item will go up in value immensely in a short period of time as the league starts more people have currency this bow i will probably or this quiver i will probably resell it for like 50 chaos at least um so so definitely <laughs> recommend uh, trying to live search find one of these and and snipe one while the getting is good there the amulet you know say i finally got curry's ward that's nice. Uh, not corrupted yet. I do have the live search set up for the corruption. There is one, actually, uh, on the trade for 1.5 divine orbs, I think. It double corrupted. I think the person found it in the Val Temple or whatever. So it looks like people are not putting their Val orbs into these yet, as of now. Um, hopefully they do soon. I do have an anointment on there. So the anointment has an interesting story here. Um, anointments are not cheap. Oils are really expensive. Anything, uh, silver oils, like 20 chaos a piece or whatever, can't afford it. So I, I took like 10 or 15 minutes to research, you know, what kind of notable I could anoint for uh, that was, that had only three relatively cheap oils. And I ended up settling for Holy Dominion, which is actually on the left side of the tree. It gives 12 all res, 24 increased light damage, and that beautiful modifier chance to freeze, shock, and ignite. Apparently only cost two azure oils and one crimson oil. Uh, so it was like five chaos or something to anoint. Uh, I, I put a good deal of research into that, like 10, 15 minutes took that time out of the day to find out which one. I, I was unprepared for um, dealing with the fact that I was going to either ride out this amulet for a day or two with no anointment or saying, oh, okay, I guess I really should anoint this with something. <laughs> what should I put on it that I can afford? And so I, ha I recommend Holy Dominion for that. Uh, there, there are honestly probably better options uh, that I'm not aware of because it took some time. So the helmet, I don't have the goal yet. It's too expensive. I had to... F Basically, this helmet is just, just devoted towards getting my fire and lightning res capped. Uh, the cold res cap's not an issue um, because of these gloves. Uh, so fire and lightning is a little bit behind the curve. And I just used a helmet to do that. Darosol's Defiance, got it. Uh, got a super nice rolled one. Um, I am definitely going to six link, or, or sorry, five link this one at some point. Uh, it cost me five chaos. You can buy a well rolled one for five chaos or less. This is a really well rolled. It's even got like, I think it's 91% baseline armor or whatever. Uh, so, so super, super high rolled defiance. Uh, Darosol's Defiance, not a popular unique this league. Like, uh, quite a typical. In fact, it seems to be even less popular this league than it was last league or, or cheaper. Yeah, so flasks, uh, the flasks are not anything special here. Although I will say, when you're mapping, you, you, your flasks up time is pretty good. So you can kind of think to yourself, you know, the, the, the rolls on your flasks, the suffixes on your flask do kind of matter. You know, you, you can set yourself up with something decent. Really helps to have this uh, suffix on here. Really keep cranking up that chance to freeze shock and ignite. I think my total chance there, I have 10 from the anointment here. I got uh, 10 from the taming. I got 20 more right here, these two small nodes. And then 27 from this flask. That's 67% chance to freeze, shock, and ignite <laughs> during flask effect. Yeah, my Herald device is, is, is pretty reliable. We'll just put it that way. 
uh, yeah. Also, uh, the nice thing, I didn't mention this with Wake of Destruction, there's a really good synergy with Herald of Thunder with these. So Herald of Thunder will, will work if you kill any enemy that is shocked. So you run past enemies, you, your Mirage Archer or whatever kills them. Spawns a tornado or spawns a thunderstorm under them. It's nice. Uh, Herald of Thunder does have small issue with I can't level it up very high. So that's kind of a problem. So I'm not huge on it, uh, but I do need to actually mention the auras I'm using because I'm not using I'm not yet using the auras that I want to be using. So the auras are Herald of Ice, Herald of Thunder, Grace, Defiance Banner, and Vitality. So basically, instead of hatred. Which I'm gonna, well, I wouldn't use until I have the physical to cold conversion done. Instead of using hatred, I'm using ice, uh, or sorry, herald of thunder, which is much cheaper, uh, obviously, and gives me plenty of room in the reservation to spare. There, yeah. Next thing I should mention is chaos recipe issues. So I, I do have my, uh, I do have loot, loot filter set up. Uh, it's just a semi-strict filter, but I do have the Chaos Recipe items showing uh, as a special color. Uh, that has been kind of issue, or kind of difficult to find all the Chaos Recipe. I mean, I can actually turn one in now. I had made a quick tips video on this before. But I assume Greetings. that most of you are already aware. Turn in one of each unidentified at the proper eye level. And, you know, Fair try well. not to mix up the wrong items <laughs> while you're at it. Greetings. Uh, this uh, chrome chromatic orb slipped in there. There we go. Okay. So that up. is how you do a couple chaos orbs. It is worth doing, I think. Um, it is the, one of the big reasons people do endless heist, so they can do chaos orb recipes as well as get other things. And uh, the heisting gives you a lot of jewelry, so it's kind of hard. Most leagues, I feel like their league mechanic will give you a lot of extra rare jewelry. It certainly felt the case. Uh, which Arch Nemesis, for example, Arch Nemesis League, even Expedition League, if I remember correctly. Uh, but this league is not so easy, and by the way, not doing the league mechanic. I did it one more time uh, in early white maps. It was just junky. I, I don't know. There's probably a way to set them up to make it good, uh, but it's like the mon the monsters in there are pretty hard to kill, and the rewards are not very good. They don't seem to be any better than just what you generally get uh, clearing the map. So I said... Uh, Forget that. <laughs> I'm I'm forgetting about it. Forgetting Calandra, I guess. I'm gonna call this video. Yeah. So there, might, I think there's a couple more things I wanted to mention here. Uh, oh, Atlas passive strats. Yeah. So people were asking about the Atlas passive strategy. You know, I I didn't even I had not really developed a full fleshed out plan on this. Oh yeah. Somebody mentioned the killed endless heights. Okay. Well. Sorry, uh, to clarify, heisting in general, like like to, you know, blow an hour or two in heisting, you know, just the normal way. Uh, not not that great. So I, I'm i a big fan of the automatic free stuff, not essence so much here, but um, I'd actually forgotten to do this, but my next Atlas point, uh, point I'm going to put in covert stakeouts. And the reason that is because I can, for free, put June missions onto my whatever map I'm doing and uh, and unlock some of the veiled modifiers. You, you, I do want to unlock, you know, most of the veiled modifiers and obviously gear that drops its veil does have a, a much higher than average chance of actually being having good rolls on it uh, too as a good item. I, I, it seems like every league league start I've had, I've always sold at least a couple of random veiled items for like an exalted orb or something. You know, a lot of chaos. Uh, usually, like it'll be like a ring or something. So yeah, I recommend uh, covert stakeouts uh, to get to unlock more of your veiled modifiers, and then probably archaeology tour later on if you want to do some mega juicing stuff with Alpha Temple. Uh, so yeah, we got free shrine, we got free strong box, I got a free harbinger. The free harbinger is really nice. Um, the maps, the the map upgrades here is good. I'm going up this way, getting stream of consciousness. Super obvious. So you should get that. Go back down here, probably pick up the Kirik mission. Go up here, get the extra higher map stuff. Uh, maybe the strong boxing thing. I'm not sure. I think I might actually go up do some breach stuff instead of going up here. I think I'm actually going to go over and do maybe some Abyss, some Abyssal Army, try to get some juicier leveling in here. Abyss, I think, is uh, <coughs> going to be a decent choice on the Kirik crafting bench. You get two Abysses this league if you select it. So going Abyss early for like, kind of like, 
quasi juicing, quasi leveling purposes might not be too bad. Uh, I am thinking of about potentially trans uh, or kind of shifting into abyss breach, maybe forcing Chalula breach is going full blown breach in that way. Uh, Legion, obviously, in the back of my mind. Yeah, so that's what I'm thinking about. Not like really going abyss, like you know, for the loot or whatever abyss is. I, su I suspect the Stygium Vice is probably sell a fair bit in the first couple of days of the league, too. So I don't really see myself doing anything on the left side of the tree. Just gonna kind of go straight up to the right, I think. Yeah, that's kind of my plan there. Uh, and that's it. That's all I had written down. So, let's do a map. Let's see what it looks like. So here's the gear. I showed you all the gear. You know, this... this I think the taming is the most expensive item I have here. It was 13 chaos to get this together. Yeah. By far, the taming was the most expensive one. Or no, the, the quiver was 10. So not by far, but barely. Yeah, so most expensive items, 13 chaos that I have. I've equipped here. Everything else, I most of the other pieces are like 1 to 5 chaos. Most of them. And let's do a map. Of course, you know, at this point, we're still just running quantity maps. This is Colonnade. I haven't done a map. I think I've done one tier seven. So this is effectively the highest tier map I've done. And I want you to pay close attention to just how powerful Herald of Ice and Thunder are um, while doing this. I can't even remember what this map looks like. Look, every, every, everything just dies. Everything gets frozen immediately. I can definitely feel not too bad about being kind of glassy. And by the way, I'm very much a glass cannon right this minute. There's no way There's no way around it. There's no way to not be a glass cannon. Oh, here we go. I actually get to do a legion. So let's see how hard legion is. Certainly can't, uh, can't fully clear a legion yet at this point. But, you know, kind of take down some rares and it's not bad. You can see once Herald of Ice comes down, it really helps clear the legion, obviously. So let's see if I die here, because I definitely might die. Having that granite flask in there is really helpful. Granite flask in combination with uh, Darius' Defiance means I at least have a chance to survive there. So definitely got my uh, butt handed to me right there. I didn't really have to run into the right in the middle of a bunch of rare monsters, but anyway. <laughs> So Legion is optional. It's not like it, not like I feel like I have to do it right here. I just go ahead and do it because, really, because I'm hoping to drop a map. Legion has a decent chance of dropping a map. There's just so many rares. By the way, uh, this whole thing about there being rare monsters in League mechanics, yeah, I don't, I don't really see that. I, it looks like there's just as many rare monsters in the maps as there ever was before, um, League mechanics and all. Though I haven't done all that many League mechanics, but really the one that I care most about is Legion. Because if they somehow, or for some reason, stripped out all the rare uh, monsters in Legion, that will definitely have some ramifications on my farming strategy early league. Currency making strategy. It looks like we're in the clear. I mean, you saw that map right there. That, that spawned quite a few rares. Look at this. Nice. Getting some maps here. These are actually, it's kind of important, you know, when you're doing the highest tier map, you definitely want to see map drops. Uh, so you can help sustain. It's hard to sustain here. Um, more general information, the way, the best thing to do is you just run maps until you run completely dry and, and you don't have any left to unlock except ones you already have unlocked. And at that point, do a Kirok mission, uh, which will invariably have at least one that you haven't unlocked. And then, after the Kirok mission is done, you go to the Kirok vendor and you buy whatever missions uh, that you haven't done yet, whatever maps that haven't been done. Oh wow, here we go. So I mentioned this earlier. This is exactly what happened. Look at this. So the arch, this arch nemesis, I didn't see the combination. But this guy could have dropped 20 gem cutter prism. That's what happened that one time before. And that was 16 chaos in value immediately. Now obviously what dropped there is doesn't have a much value. So <clears throat> for that information, I'm definitely anticipating gem cutter prisms. While most people haven't caught on to this yet, they're, they're going to be worth a lot less uh, this league than before. If, if we see that kind of thing here happen a whole bunch. That was my free harbinger kill. So I got a lot, you know, I got a lot of maps or a lot of uh, a lot of league mechanics going on here that are forced on every map for free, not costing me anything at all. I 
still need to show my uh, passive skill tree, I guess. I didn't really do that. So after I do this uh, this boss here for the first time, can't even remember what boss it is. Oh, it's this guy. Okay, I probably am going to die on this guy because I always die on this guy, even in the campaign. <laughs> so much damn burning ground. Actually, it's a pretty good idea to try to shotgun him, except uh, I'm out of flask charges now, so... Somehow, uh, made it through that without dying. Although, I think he can kill me even after the fact. Potentially. Okay, well, map's clear. Now, map is clear. Uh, the items that I'm dropping now are above the chaos recipe, but I can still use them, as long as at least one item... Is at the proper level. So, belts, I definitely want to pick up. I don't have a huge number of belts here, as you can see, but amulets are what I really need more than anything. Hello. But uh, let's see a few of these here. Jimmy and that that's what I found in that one map. So, let's see. I got a new map that I need to do. Unfortunately, it needs to be rare <laughs> at, the, uh, at the proper tier. So, I'm not... Let's see if I... Uh, yeah, I think I will actually do this. So I'm gonna take this scouring orb and scour that sucker and then put an alchemy orb on it. So, oh, and it's going to be the first map that I run this league with Beyond on it. I haven't seen that yet, so that'll be interesting to see. Anyway, uh, oh yeah, last thing to, to check here is the passive skill tree. I'm following my build guide exactly as was. You can see right here with my passive tree, if you, if you juxtapose this with the uh, leveling portion, I think level 70 to 90 portion where you're kind of getting soul thirst at some point in this at this stage in the game you're going to be transitioning to soul thirst it just looks exactly that way uh, the only thing that I will get before I do soul thirst definitely these three passive points here um, but everything else looks the same I'm working on a little more hit here and my precision I dropped the ball a little bit on my chance to hit I, I way out leveled my hit cap I'm still now only at 92% uh, but, you know, I, I, uh, I'm starting to run a precision. I can certainly fit it in there because I'm not running Hatred and I'm running Herald of Thunder. So I can easily fit precision in here. And it's going to go from 92 up to 93. So a few more levels of precision, a few more passive points in here. And then uh, precision adds 100% increased mana reservation efficiency. It's going to be easy. It's gonna, I'm going to be back to hit cap in no time. Flat. Yep. So if you have any questions about this, this is just kind of early day two. I'm just kind of showcasing step by step. This, this, this isn't really a major transition period. It kind of is. Getting in, Going from the campaign to white maps is not much to it. You're just trying to cap your resistances and maybe get your bow. I, th I think the two big things is to cap your resistances, elemental resistances, by a fast base five link bow. Put one shrieking of essence of wrath in it which will cost you four or five chaos to buy that essence and then just take whatever role you get uh buy two or three if you know if you care a lot about the roles and you have the currency and then that bow is going to take you i mean this again this bow take take you all the way into red maps probably you can see the damage i was doing in that map was totally satisfactory uh for tier seven uh so i it can certainly take me into red maps but my next thing i'm going to do the next upgrade i'll probably get is I will go ahead and buy. It's going to cost me 20 to 30 chaos to buy a six linked bow. And I will use a few essences on it until I get one that probably has about, I don't know, 600 elemental DPS or more. And I'll have to figure out what that six uh, gem is going to be because I honestly am not 100% sure <laughs> right now. So, uh, yeah, again, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask in the comments below. I hope you are enjoying the League Start. If you're following through with what I'm doing, let me know if there's anything you are doing or anything that you see that I'm not seeing that you should try. There you go. I got that point there. And other than that, I'll see you in another 24 hours because, you know, this nail this whole league start thing out pretty fast, whether I'm trying or not. Um, I'm going to be having a soul thirst on. So I think I'll pro the next time I make a video on this will probably be the transition into soul thirst. Actually, getting into soul thirst as a pure elemental build not uh, a fizz to cold conversion yet because it won't won't have the capacity to do that all right see you in the next video